three looting all stars in Zimbabwe. Looting, looting like looting all stars. We wanted to create a team of looters that can go and compete uh, on the world stage. Which three individuals would you say, yeah, these ones can really make up a good team of, of looters? Uh, at the moment, or, or is this from your time list? in politics up to now? Eh? From your be uh, the beginning of your career up to now? Oh, no, but I mean, you know, uh, you can't say that because uh, my career started the day I was born, you know. Uh, so from then, so we take it no, from no, then. No, no. Uh, but I think I get what 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 you say, what you are saying. Um, uh, is there a bell? Uh, number one. Yes, right. We can we can we can we've got a bell. We've got a. <laughs> We've got a bell. I'll, I'll, my mouth is the bell. So, ding, number one. Number one is uh, the ZDF syndicate that, uh, together with its Chinese uh, counterpart, stole 15 billion from Marangi. Okay. Ding, number two. Number two is uh, Emerson Munangagwa. He's a Number three. Number three, very close. Three is uh, Kuda Tagire. Yo, okay. All right. I, I somehow knew that name would pop up. We've, we've, got, we've got another question here from Jason Duma. He asks, what happened to the hashtag so far so good? It became bad. Uh-huh. Nothing lasts forever. That's true. Yeah. Do you think that will be the same case with uh, Zanu being in government? Nothing yeah, lasts I forever. told you we that Zanu is an old car. It's a Skoro Koro that must be thrown away in order to get a more efficient and faster car, better car. Uh, we, we'll see if that day ever comes to be. Now, uh, in the last if it doesn't days, come, you, if people don't get a, a better, faster car, they will not get there. Oh, so we, we need to, to, to manufacture that car and yes. put it on the road quick as Zanu, possible. Zanu PF, Zanu PF was once upon a time a beautiful and very efficient car. Mm. But, it, but there is no car which lasts forever. It is now a Skoro Koro. To, to dump in the scrapyard. In the scrapyard, all right. Mm -hmm. So in the last days leading up to the coup, um, that wasn't a coup, but was a coup, so as, as everyone puts it, uh, they seem, the G40 faction seemed to have full support uh, pushing uh, Grace Mugabe's takeover. Were you the orchestrator of this? Was that the case? Was she being pushed to lead the G40 faction? Um, those who executed the coup needed a narrative to justify the coup. Mm. And as a student of uh, politics, I give them credit for having crafted a narrative that resonated with not only the body politic in the country, but also the outside world by coming up with this fiction that Grace was supposed to take over uh, and uh, uh, she was being uh, uh, either uh, supported or even uh, proved up by the so-called G40. So that was a, 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 an attractive narrative. Uh, especially when it was also fueled by the Mugabe must go mantra, one of the oldest mm -hmm. mantras going back to 1999. So right. uh, 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 you, uh, I'm sure as uh, rational people, we can understand how people who want to do something must come up with a story to support the something they want to do. There's a famous uh, mm -hmm. a German saying that if you want to kill a dog, you must allege that it is rabbis. 
right, right, right. And and so that uh, that was the grace was the rebels of the you would say ah no you know and then this G forty thing, but quite frankly, uh, even if for the sake of argument, uh, uh, Grace Mugabe was interested in uh, uh, the presidency, uh, and 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 you can't banish people or uh, stop people uh, from dreaming, wishing, it's not a crime. There is no rational basis that she could have been president. Even her husband did not support that. Okay, but she seemed to, to, to have a platform quite a lot. I mean, she was making a lot of public addresses. Ah, um, yeah. I mean, she was, very, she was a politician. She was the leader of the Women's League in, in ZANU-PF. And in, 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 in terms of uh, ZANU-PF politics or uh, liberation movements, uh, tradition and practice, chair ladies of the Women's League, there they are two groups in these parties which usually are fire fire, the Women's League and the Youth League. Fire fire, moto moto. Right. We are fewer, we are fewer, we are right. when, when, when those right. two uh, come into the picture. So you Got can't it. have okay. a chair lady of the Women's League who is silent and there is a, a succession debate going on. So the fact that she was uh, up there uh, in the mix uh, uh, did not uh, uh, require a rocket scientist to unpack. Okay, all right. No, it's, 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 uh, it's understood. Why, as we speak, the journalist Hopal Chinono is, uh, a stay, is a guest again of the state and um, stuff like that is us as stand-up comedians, even before this the new regime, the old one, we would get a lot of warnings about what we are allowed to say and what we are not permitted to say. And why such fear of people just speaking in other countries? Like, doesn't it open up or doesn't it make uh, the government of the day look good to allow, you know, members of the entertainment sector to seem to be questioning the government. Why in Zim is it such a feared thing to have uh, either stand-up comedians or, you know, journalists just speak? Why are you trying to associate yourself with Opwell? No, it, it's, it's not, now, well, I mean... I'm a stand-up uh, stand, stand comedian, hey, hey, look, look, look. I can see you are trying to smuggle yourself into this uh, <laughs> list. No, it, for, 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 that's clever. For for thingy, I mean, because Lati Pella, we've we've been told here and there today. Watch out about what you say. You know, uh, obviously, yes. What Hopal does is is has got way more seriousness uh, to it than what we do. Uh, but the question is just in the, uh, on from a freedom of speech perspective. Yeah, no, I think let us uh, separate two things, Dove, about yes. this. First of all, there is no evidence that there is general fear of free speech. There is no evidence mm. of that. In the particular incident, this incident involving the woman uh, who had uh, allegedly been said to have. Uh, uh, been having a baby uh, on her back in a combi, and the police uh, allegedly had come uh, with their pattern sticks and uh, uh, indiscriminately beating people up to to set them from um, uh, getting uh, uh, in, uh, onto a combi. They accidentally, or one of them accidentally struck the head struck of, the of the baby. And, um, that incident, uh, Dove was reported widely uh, with a video that circulated all over the place. Right. If there was a problem with that speech, you would have expected the law enforcement authorities to look for the person who took the video and circulated the video. Because that is the publisher. The publisher can't be Hopewell and uh, uh, Fadzai and, uh, and, and Job. The publisher is the person who took that video 
and spread. They are not interested in that person. Mm -hmm. That should tell you something. Secondly, the fact that many other people did exactly or worse uh, of what the three did, but they are not interested in them. Maybe you also circulated it for all we know. Right. Right. But they are, they are leaving you alone and they are going for, for those three. That should also tell us something as Zimbabwean. So what is it that we should draw from this? In my humble opinion, they've targeted these three. Oh, uh, in, uh, uh, let me take a step back. Uh, in order to understand why they've picked these three, which I'm saying it's not about free speech. Right. It's something okay. else. If it was free speech, they would have gone for the originator. And, but they have picked this, this three. Why? Well, who has picked these three? Mm. We want to assume that they've just been arrested by the ordinary police person, the constable uh, doing their bit. No. Mm. They've been arrested by a high powered team. And they are high powered team that has arrested them and which is not getting the spotlight that it deserves is a CIO team from the counterintelligence division of the CIO. Okay. All these three have been arrested by a CIO led team. And the arrest or decision to arrest them did not come from law and order. The police were very bothered by this issue, the normal police, because right. the video was disturbing mm -hmm. of a policeman. It was disturbing. And a rational person who is not insane watching that video uh, had every reason to believe that that woman was holding a lifeless baby. Right. The, just the video itself is very bad for the police. And the statement that the police released almost 24 hours after the incident was a contrite. It was an embarrassed uh, statement. Uh, it was not seeking Hopewell or Fazai uh, or Job. It was, uh, I, it's not what you people think. That's not what happened. And we are sorry, you know, uh, it's, what happened is uh, that there was uh, this uh, confusion where uh, one of our officers used the button to smash the windscreen and then, uh, you know, um, made parts of it uh, started flying all over and uh, hit the baby. But you know what? The baby was not injured. And what is disturbing to us is that the policeman and the woman did not report and so forth. You know, it was not a statement like, hey, you have put our name into disrepute. Because if anyone put the police or the state into disrepute, it's the police uh, man. Not anyone else, you know. This, the story uh, that uh, the woman uh, was fighting the policeman because uh, he had killed the baby and so forth, uh, was invited by the video. Now, if the police right. wanted uh, uh, to maintain their reputation, one, they should have immediately released the true story because there were other police people there. They didn't need to call a central committee or Politobio meeting to say, let's come up with a statement almost 24 hours later. That was a police problem and not a Hopewell problem, and not a jobs uh, problem, and not a Fadzai problem. Now, I would understand it differently if the issue was that because Hopewell is a journalist, or because um, uh, to a lesser, a lesser extent and not as convincing a, an argument because Job Scala is the vice chairperson of the MDC uh, Alliance, or because uh, Fadzai is the spokesperson, having treated the first time with the video, they should have also put the police uh, report after it was uh, issued to say, this is what the police are saying and correct and so forth. Although a lot of people who are well-meaning found it difficult to run 
with the police statement because uh, actually the police have a, an established record of lying. They don't tell the truth <laughs> in these matters. Uh, and yesterday, uh, that record in this matter seems to have been sustained because we now have in the public domain two different names of uh, the woman. The, the one given by police in, 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 in the court proceedings and another given by ZBC, court, uh, yes. you know, two different. And, and surely it can't be about the same person. So why are they not embarrassed by that? Now, the issue is that this, this is what happens when law and order policing is done by the CIO, counterintelligence. They are not police. Mm. The constitution does not give them policing power. And yet mm. under Mnangagwa, they are the, at the forefront of orchestrating the arrest of people and participating in the arrest of people. And when that happens, it has nothing to do with free speech and everything to do with politics. Hopewell, Fadai, and Job were arrested over the 31st July incident. And the state has a continuing grudge with them, in not the state as such, but these CIO people, the counterintelligence people. And that's okay. why they are picking on them. And I, and I think the public, all of us, have uh, every reason to be outraged by this uh, abuse. Uh, it's not just that they are charging them under a law that was invalidated uh, uh, from uh, long, long time ago, in, I think in 2014, uh, and, uh, because it had been brought or challenged uh, brought to court uh, under the former constitution. And it was invalidated. And you expect a new dispensation which says we are not going to be like what used to happen under the former constitution. You expect them to be at the forefront of not uh, resurrecting and giving life to those laws. This is, this is shameful and quite uh, uh, revealing. It exposes the, the lie that you have a new dispensation which is anchored in a culture of human rights, respect of the law. No, they don't. You have a new dispensation which is run by securocrats. It's not run right. by politicians. And the sec securocrats don't care about anybody's rights. And I think that's why they are not coming after you. Mm. <laughs> so even though you did that, you can sleep soundly. They are not coming after you because you didn't participate in the 31st of July demonstrations. Hopewell and Job, Job uh, Scala and, and Fazai did. And you have a, a vindictive state that is continuing to go after them because they think they are part of uh, a faction of, in the ruling party, which they associate with those events. So they think these guys are being used by the people they are fighting. Uh, the state has uh, factions and the factions, the leading factions in the state or in ZANU-PF right now, uh, which are associated with uh, uh, VP Chuenga and Mnangagwa, are sacrocratic factions. So these guys, uh, uh, these three, are the grass that is suffering because they believe that they are doing the bidding for somebody else. Uh, and, and this is a tragic, unfortunate, and, and unacceptable. Okay. All right. Uh, we're going to get into, uh, we don't want to keep you for long. We've been chatting for a while. Uh, so we're going to just ask one last question and then we get into the section where we call rapid fire. So rapid fire is just, we ask you a question, no explanation from your end. You just answer the question is asked. But uh, the last question before we get into our rapid fire to close off the show is, uh, was, your, was your issue with uh, the University of Vitz ever resolved? You tell me what that issue is. As far as me and Vitz are concerned, we have never had any issue. But if you have an issue that you wanted me and Vitz to, to resolve, be my guest. But I have never had any issue to resolve with Vitz. The, uh oh.
really there's the there's a, an issue uh of some funds that uh allegedly went missing about yeah, the, uh, the key million. word is allegedly i want to tell you and i know this will watch listen to this i'm saying to you not for a second for a minute for an hour for a day for a week for a month for a year have i had any issue with this none whatsoever me and this so i hear from okay. you and who, and whoever you are relying on it's your issue i want to ask you whether you have resolved it because it's not my issue i've have had no issue whatsoever zero with with vids all right i i, I see again love i see pagi pasia code uh, we can, we can get yeah, to a it can is only as male or not open yeah amanga atupa amanga yakataza mhlobo wami because if you if you yeah. tell a lie you will keep asking the question hoping that the lie will develop legs a characteristic <laughs> feature of a lie is that it is legless right i okay no uh, if you are saying there is no issue i get no i'm saying uh, i've no never issue. had an issue yeah uh -huh. i have never had an issue with them me and them they've never come to me to say we want this we want that i've never i've read a lot of uh, theories fantasies hallucinations and that's what they have remained is ah okay all right no that's fine we can get into our rapid fire question it's five questions and uh, no explanation just answer as asked uh, number one which genre of music do you prefer uh, listening to sungura zim dancehall or urban groups well the only problem with uh, that i, I, I you know uh, dube there is a a, a a a position that nobody should obey an unlawful instruction <laughs> or, or, or. <laughs> you can't come up with an unlawful instruction and you want me to obey it and say choose between one of your children or your uncles or your parents uh or, 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 or uh, uh, your, 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 your best uh, music when you happen to choose three of the most wonderful genres that uh, i love uh, each one yes, if you were to pick I, one which one i love to all mind? of them uh so i love them um so you said uh, dance hall eben grove uh, and sungura so here yes. is how i love them uh sungura eben grove and now dancehall zim dancehall dancehall okay so according to your hierarchy sungura came first so that's the answer will go yeah there was ahead. no way i could have not loved it when it came and go then <laughs> uh eben grooves came on the scene there was no way i could hate that one especially eben grooves because i'm associated with it and it is associated mm. with the 75 percent uh co content uh, uh, uh mm. policy and zim zim dance hall, which is fire fire right now how can i not right. love it ah all right and then uh second one the joshua nkomo statue or the mbuyane handa statue ah that one is easy i really love joshua nkomo statue all right number three i have not seen one... any i have not seen any any mbuyane handa uh, statue by the way i have not seen any i've seen oh. uh, some stuff you know I, I i saw a slay queen uh being presented as mbuyane handa was it was a lot i can't allow us in in well in trouble yeah i'm not in class and come on with him papa i got to <laughs> okay so uh no, question three uh if you will indulge us name one minister during your time that was known for loving women uh, uh, so uh, is this a male <laughs> minister or a female minister <laughs> <laughs> 
I think we can go with male for now. If there's a female one, then yes, you can tell us. But one that was known would be I love Agulom Seven. Actually, I'm tempted to answer this question because I find it very interesting. Let me say, uh, as far as I was aware, uh, all of the uh, ministers uh, uh, loved women and some of them, uh, uh, as we know, uh, I, I don't have uh, evidence to support this, but uh, uh, the fact that they, they were polygamist, most ZANU ministers are polygamist, most. And yeah. those who are not polygamists have too many small house, too many to even count. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know whether they have, the fact of their being polygamist or having these small houses uh, meant that they loved women. I hope so. Because uh, if one was not enough, it means they really loved them. But one yeah. minister I would, uh, uh, and this I, because I said I'm tempted to answer this, I would say was a kind of uh, a Casanova. Uh, 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 I, I think uh, Francis Nema. Francis, oh. <laughs> wherever you are, let's not fight my brother. Peace, peace. <laughs> <laughs> I, you have answered, you have answered. Which do you prefer, diamonds or gold? For what purposes? Just. No, I can't prefer those things, you know. I mean, you know, um, uh, mm. they, they, they cannot be matters of preference, you know, because if it's about preference, I prefer neither. Uh, but if, it, if it's about which one is more useful, uh, I know there is a lie that diamonds are forever. I've never understood uh, what the hell that means. Uh, mm -hmm. But practically speaking, Zimbabwe should uh, focus on gold because there's gold. That's why we are King Solomon's country. There's gold uh, every uh, uh, square inch underneath in there, there's gold. And it is shameful that we have never been able to utilize gold properly uh, to develop our country. Uh, gold endowed our country with amazing uh, deposits. Uh, uh, of gold, it should make us very, very uh, rich. It's shameful that we haven't been able to do that. Yes, there are parts where we have, we have diamonds here and there, but gold is it for Zimbabwe. Okay, all right. And then the last question, if you were given the green light to come back to Zim and join any political party of your choice, which would you pick and why? Well, I, 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 I think that your premise that it would depend on me being green, given a green light is, is, is problematic. You mean, what light is there now? Red, red, red. There's red everywhere. Uh, well, I mean, as so you why said, should it depend on green exactly. light? I mean, no, why green light? You know, why green light? No, uh, you know that uh, freedom of association is not a function of a green light. It is a natural right that uh, every human being is born with. And, yes, and, and it must be exercised, uh, exercised from that premise of uh, a natural right that we are born with. It's just a good thing that we enshrine it also in the constitution. But let me be honest with you. Uh, the, the, uh, if I answer your question wearing this the, the heart of a, a, a student of uh, politics, mm -hmm. I will say the unfortunate thing about the question is that you are asking me uh, to associate with a, a relic of politics, something which now belongs uh, to the archives of politics. The age of political parties is well, well and truly behind us. Mm -hmm. uh, we are now in a new era of uh, uh, alliances uh, and, 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 and the idea of the MDC Alliance is very innovative in so far as it is about bringing uh, groups of different persuasions, 
uh, which uh, have individuals of uh, similar persuasions together, you will not find any democratic country, even in our region, which is uh, uh, ruled by one political party. The most dynamic and progressive countries right now are governed by coalitions. If someone wants to wake up and form a political party, they are mad. They need to have their heads examined by competent uh, psychiatrists uh, because they belong in the past. So if I were to get the proverbial green light, I would not join any political party, but I would hope that there would be a progressive coalition of different uh, political groupings and so forth, which is what Zimbabwe needs which is what you have in Malawi, uh, you have in Kenya, you have in South Africa. We tend to think that uh, the ANC is ruling, uh, I hate to use the word ruling, but just to make the point uh, alone. Yes. No, it is governing with others. And uh, one of the flaws, fatal flaws of Mnangagwa Sizano PF is because it is still anchored in the Vambazonke mentality of yesterday. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for that. Any parting words before we say goodbye? Ah, uh, well, that is the most difficult question. Uh, uh, the interview has not ended. <laughs> so we are not parting. We are still in there. <laughs> we're, we're still in the yeah. guys. We are still in the We're groove. In the, in, in the groove of things. In the, uh, in the right, Pax actually, Afro the, groove. I, <laughs> I, 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 I need, I, I will find out, I'll do some research to find out uh, uh, what are some of the important days in your life, like your birthday or whatever. Since I've just right. missed New Year's, I will look for another uh, period. I okay. commit to sending you the double CD, the real one. Uh, the real one, one, okay. Digital one, the real, the real double CDs, uh, Pax Afro, because clearly, clearly, you have heard about it, but you have not listened to it. I want you to listen to it. So in the, in the, in the, in the you know, in that thing, plan. I but I mean, I we will we'll have a discussion about that. That one is personal between me and you. We'll yes. talk about yes. that one. Yes. But um, actually, there's a question that I missed here. Maybe we can have it as a parting question. Uh, you speak of the Kukura Undi genocide now, and um, everyone knows of its existence. Uh, I think the question that was uh, asked, it actually came as a comment on Twitter, but the person asked not to be revealed. Uh, why now? Uh, did you try push uh, for this to be addressed during, uh, and, well, during your time under the Mugabe leadership? Yes, I did. Uh, but uh, a lot of uh, compatriots don't seem to understand that uh, how you pursue things when you are inside is different from how you pursue them when you are outside. Uh, uh, you can make noise inside and, and you must pray that it remains inside uh, because the moment it goes outside, then you, you, you have failed in your agenda inside and your detractors will just kill the issue or kill you. If you are inside and you go and make noise outside, they will either kill you or kill the issue. But I really tried, including in my personal conversations uh, with uh, the late former president uh, Mugabe, I had lots of uh, engagements uh, with him on that issue. Uh, and some of the, 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 those experiences, God willing, I will uh, uh, share them uh, in, 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 in a work that I, I, I've been doing for quite some time uh, under the rubric, the general rubric of uh, letters to my father. But I'm the only one who has actually produced a draft Kugrahundi bill. I'm the only one. And I put it in parliament and I did not find supporters. I did not find supporters of the bill in the opposition MDC. 
uh, I did not find the supporters of the bill in ZANU PF, but I took it to Parliament, and it's there. I've shared it. You know, I have come up with the bill, and uh, and and I, I I I no one else has come up with that bill. Uh, uh, it addresses everything that, in my humble opinion, in a serious way, ought to be addressed uh, in terms of resolving this question. So I did not start raising the Gugraundi issue uh, after the coup. No, I raised it. Uh, I've raised it. I raised it before. Uh, I, 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 I remember one, the, uh, um, I, one time uh, after the joint uh, uh, Zapo Zanu Congress, uh, I wrote uh, something in the Financial Gazette about Gugraundi and uh, focused specifically on uh, Munangagwa and parents Shiri. And um, I said, much as uh, uh, we may forgive subject to certain uh, uh, due process issues, we'll never forget this question about uh, uh, Gugraundi. Uh, but the tactics then will depend on the day and the moment and the structural dynamics of that time. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, one of the reasons why, frankly, when everything is said and done, uh, I just have a problem imagining a society led by Mnangagwa is that the way things happened in ZANU and then ZANU PF with ZAPO, some of us were so sure that the exit of President Mgabe, however it happened, will not be succeeded by anyone associated with the dark days of, of, of our country. And the darkest days of our country are Gugurawundi days, you know? And for me, it's a, it's a, it's a living nightmare, you know, that we have Mnangagwa, uh, uh, or, or even Chimonyo, you know, General Chimonyo. General Chimonyo succeeded the parents, Shiri, you know, uh, in Zimbabwe, uh, when, when Shiri was put to head the Air Force, we thought Mugabe was just packing him there because uh, uh, Zimbabwe having a, an Air Force is not different from it uh, having a Navy, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, so, Sasugu yege la njuguta, but But the army, the army is the real thing in Zimbabwe. To have right. a guy who was in Gugurawundi heading Gugurawundi heading the army in 2021 is a nightmare. Chimono succeeded the parents Shiri as the commander of the, uh, of the 5th Brigade. And by that time, the 5th Brigade was uh, operating more in Matsau. And it was doing gruesome murders. And some of the things, uh, uh, if you look at the archives that uh, Chimono was saying, which are in the uh, chronicle, uh, uh, defending and saying we are here to do our job, and we say we are killing people. Say so, you know, leave us alone. We are here to kill, to do our job, and their job was to kill people, uh, torture, and throw them in disused mines and so forth. You can't have that guy heading the army today. If they had put him on, uh, in the air force, it's like putting him in the navy. We will not uh, make too much noise. But army in 2021. It is just unbelievable. These are the things, if you had a, a change, we did not expect that the very same people are the reason why our society has been what it, uh, it, it, it has been, come and say we are the new dispensation. Uh, it's, 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 it's really un, 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 unbelievable. It's really shocking. I, I swear many, I know a lot of people in ZANU-PF who did not think that uh, President Mgabe will be succeeded by that cohort. And yet they have. And that's why you see these guys, to them, politics does not matter. What matters are guns. You know, we thought, by outsmarting them politically, we were creating a new dispensation which would uh, take hold. And the reason why we were very much about the youth, uh, whether through music, uh, culture, uh, or through 
economic empowerment through indigenization, we were really making noise about the youth. And we were not making noise about them from a partisan point of view. We're making noise about them as a generation, not a political group. Generation 40, which I wrote about in August of 2011, was not about the political parties. It was about this millennial, you know, the millennial group of our country. And to say, let there be that transition. And uh, to say, where our generation has been emphasizing entitlement, they emphasize merit. They emphasize uh, where we have been about ourselves, the monolithic group, we are the ones who fought for this, who fought for that. They are emphasizing diversity, mm. not only in terms of uh, the positions uh, or gender, but um, in very significant terms uh, of uh, uh, the essence of humanity itself, uh, gender, uh, tribe, uh, class, uh, the, our young generation, uh, uh, and, and race as well. You know, our, uh, you know, young generation, if you come to them with a, a racist narrative, they just will not get you. You, you disconnect with the young Zimbabweans the moment you bring a tribal narrative, a racist narrative, a sexist uh, narrative, uh, and uh, worse, if you bring a narrative which says um, they are stockholders, they are the ones who fought for this country. The young generation knows that no one lives forever. So if you say you are a stockholder and you must decide because you fought for this country, how about when you die as you are going to, who, who will be the stockholder? Your children and their children, is that the kind of country you're trying to bring? The young generation have no space for that. So that is why we were trying to emphasize generation 40 and trying to say it is intergenerational and it is not about uh, partisan politics. We, we were poking holes into the old guard mentality to say that mentality must disappear with the uh, Obabum Gabi. Okay. Okay. So if, if G40 had succeeded, who would you have put as uh, president? Well, you know what? When you have a, a transition, especially a generational transition, it's, it's very difficult to look around uh, the countries which have actually had, if not to totally successful, but a fairly or reasonably successful transition. When you, uh, a transition, a successful transition needs uh, O Mandela. It needs a Mandela like, you are not going to find a Mandela who is 40 years old. Mm. Right. So, you need to find that Madala whose orientation disposition is inclusive and can lead and, and handhold the younger ones. To, 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 uh, and so in Zimbabwe, we needed and still do someone who is not going to be rejected by a significant cohort of the security system who are rooted in the liberation struggle and are still with us. If you look mm. for generals in the army, whether you're looking at the American army, the British army, Australian army, Canadian, New Zealand, and I name these because they are supposed to be the paragon of this uh, more open system. So I'm keeping away from Russia oh, and yes. China. Uh, but if you look at them, they are very old people. <laughs> All of them, the generals, very old people. Right. Very old. But the armies they lead have young people. And the critical ranks, right. uh, when it comes to execution, are young people. So in Zimbabwe, we can't have a transition led by someone who is seen as a, a, a chombe, umtengisi, uh, by, by the generation of, of the 
liberation okay. struggle. And you, you also can't have someone who is hostile to young people, uh, who, who has a, a, a stakeholder mentality or an entitled mentality. So the problem with a transition in Zimbabwe is that it was supposed to happen in 1995 and, uh, at the, uh, 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 and not beyond 2000. And it didn't happen. But it's not about opposition politics. This is ZANU PF. It's a more nuanced issue like that. When you take all those things into con consideration, in my humble opinion, and this is an opinion I held deeply in, when I balanced things out, because our transition didn't happen when we were spoiled for choice and there were many possibilities. Uh, the only person in the pool who fit for me uh, who was a, 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 a transition of fit, generation of fit, was uh, uh, Sydney Sekramai. Sydney okay. Sekramai was, uh, if for those who have followed Kenyan politics, uh, was the equivalent of um, uh, 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 someone who was linked to uh, Kano uh, politics, uh, but also um, open to new uh, politics and so forth. You will find similar things, someone linked to Malawi Congress party, but uh, uh, open to young politics. You go to Zambia, you'll also find that their transition was someone who was linked to unique politics, but open to the young politics. But uh, uh, every transition is led by that kind of a, a figure. Uh, Mandela is the best example. Uh, the others will be little Mandelas and so forth. If you look at the countries, look at the presidents who led the transitions in the countries I've mentioned, Zambia, Malawi, Kenya. We needed someone like that. And our own example, you know, Sekramai is no Mandela by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, people remind me that he was defense minister uh, at uh, a critical period during Gugura Wound and so forth. Uh, uh, but his attitude then and over the years uh, was very different from those of his peers. Uh, okay. uh, he was not uh, an extremist. Uh, okay. And over the years, he got better. Uh, during his uh, years as the Minister of State for National Security, we did not have the sort of things that were happening when Mnangagwa was the Minister of State for National Security. He tried within serious limits to reform the CIO and so forth. I want today back to its dark days. It is now doing exactly the sort of things that it used to do during the Google. They had been a bit of something uh, to do some and so forth. So me, my choice was Sekramai, uh, but uh, with a team of young people as a transitional leader. Yeah. And 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 Sekramai, because the, the the choice, the pool was now very poor. I chose him from a very poor pool, pool, depleted, poisoned, dirty, and corrupted pool. I, I picked him from that pool. Okay. From that pool. Okay. All right. Well, no. So uh, to, to say goodbye, you said there were ministers that did love uh, the ladies and were Casanovas, and you you were you you never you were never seen in those. You never played in. in in that background. How? Oh, so, so <laughs> 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 oh, so Thank you for taking time out to, to, to speak with us. And we, we are hoping to have even more discussions with um, 
people in power as well to just open up that dialogue and then make sure that you know the channel of communication between generations is open you know to be able to understand better what's happening in our country and in our politics and so on than to rely solely on uh, what most would say is propaganda is ubalima pepe so thank you very much sir for for, for taking it's your time pleasure. out thank to speak you very with much us. Thank you very much. Love to the family and hope 2021 treats you, you well. Thank All you. right, so my, my CD is coming. My CD is coming. I will be in touch with you privately so that my CD comes and I listen to it. If, I'll be honest enough, if I am swayed and I change my mind, you will tell me what you want wow. and I will get it. That is the encouragement I needed. It's in the mail. Okay. All, All right, right, sir. Ciao. Thank you very yeah. much. That was it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for tuning in. Or you don't agree with his politics, with his views. You have to admit that it's one of the most brilliant minds uh, that we've encountered in Zimbabwean politics. And for him to take time out to speak with us is an honor and something that we'll cherish forever. Please tune in next week, same time, same place. Leave comments. Uh, let us know what you disagreed with and so on. And we will tweet it to him and I'm sure he'll be more happy to respond. But for now, take care of yourselves. Keep masking up. Keep sanitizing. And we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Sure. Hi, I see, I see, I see.